Hi, this is Pastor Rob Wright of Abundant Grace Church, and I want to thank you for listening to our broadcast, Grace for Today, heard right here on KKVV Christian Radio every Sunday at 8.30, Mondays and Wednesdays at 1.30, and now on Friday at 1.30 as well. Don't forget, Grace for Today, heard right here on KKVV Christian Radio, Sundays at 8.30, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1.30 p.m. Tune in and be blessed. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. God's promises are dependent on our prayers. The promises are planted in us, appropriated by us, and held in the arms of faith by prayer. Prayer gives us the promises, their efficiency, and utilizes them. Prayer puts the promises to practical and present uses. Promises like the rain are general. Prayer embodies, precipitates, and locates them for personal use. The promise, like electricity, may sparkle and dazzle and yet remain useless for good until these dynamic, life-giving currents are chained by prayer and become mighty forces that move and bless. Father God, thank you that our prayers can put your promises to practical and present uses. All we have to do is believe in your mighty name. Fred Hodges, KKVV, Las Vegas. I just want to let you know, you're listening to KKVV Las Vegas, AM 1060, and we're impacting the valley with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening. A challenge from Dr. Michael Youssef. The church is preaching cheap grace. Churches that are preaching salvation without repentance are offering people false hope through false gospel, and they are preaching false mercy. For God's mercy is not based only upon His love, but it's also based on His justice. God's mercy is not grounded upon sentimentality, but it is grounded upon His blood that was poured out on the cross as a payment for you sin and the penalty of my sin. For on the cross, God's justice was satisfied. And when you and I trust in that act of God on the cross, that he has done that on our behalf, we will receive mercy. Learn more from the pastor of the Church of the Apostles, Dr. Michael Youssef, each day on Leading the Way. To Save the Lost at All Costs, heard every Sunday at 3.02 p.m. on KKVV. Are you between a rock and a hard place? Not sure if you're a sinner or a saint? Not sure if you lost your salvation? Not sure about anything? Well, tune in to Save the Lost at All Costs, heard every Sunday at 3.02 p.m. on KKVV. Folks, we'd like to invite you to listen to Riding by Faith Tuesdays at noon with Brother Jim Smith. Are you shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace? You know, even a well-trained horse is only as good as his feet. Likewise, believers also must be shy with the preparation that comes from God's Word. Come on, join us Tuesdays at high noon right here at KKVV Las Vegas. Welcome to Open Book Radio Club, a membership program of like-minded people. Your words should be heard to increase awareness of what you do. Become a part of a growing community and let Open Book Radio Club highlight you. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Open Book Radio Club. You know, every Saturday we are here at 2.02 p.m., Pacific Standard Time. And we're here with someone different every single time to talk about what they do. This is a place where you can promote your book, your music, your business, whatever you're doing, and you want someone to know about it, you need to contact us at Open Book Radio Club. Let me give you our website, www.openbookclub.com. And remember to tell your friends to tune in, no matter where they're at, in or out of state. Right, D.W.? Right, absolutely. And what could they do to contact us? Well, they could call one of these phone numbers. Now, if you're in Las Vegas, 
702-650-KKVV. That's 702-650-5588. Now, if you're watching us uh, streaming online or you just happen to catch our signal somewhere out there outside of Las Vegas, 1-800-366-8883. That's three eights and a three. Three six six eight 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 three. Fantastic. So we love bringing you new information. If you created something, how was someone going to know? That's right. They have to come on the Open Book Radio Show, right? That's right. They do. <laughs> they do. You won't, nobody will hear about it unless you come on the show. Fantastic. Okay. Well, today we have Denise Robinson, and she has a fantastic CD. I hope we brought it in. Did we bring it in? A, oh, he has the cover. Can you go get the cover for us? Oh, yeah. Because all he needs is a CD, and I. Oh, she's oh, got, it she's got one. I want to lift this she's up so prepared. everybody can see it because you know we're streaming. Look at that pretty girl on Look there. Look at that. So she has this fantastic CD, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So DW, I'm going to give you the honors to read her bio. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, Minister Denise Robinson is a singer, songwriter, artist accomplished author and a messenger of Jesus Christ. She has a passion for everything she does and it's evident in her ministry. A native of Cincinnati, Ohio, she is currently sharing her gift by serving at Christian Embassy Worship Center in Las Vegas. As a member of the gospel, as a minister of the gospel, her sole desire is to be an empty vessel that can be filled by the Lord and then to be poured out as into a hurting world. Because without him, we can do nothing. In July 2012, Denise released her new solo project entitled Whatever, Whenever, and Already God Has Used This Project to Bless the Masses. Fantastic. And the message, Hallelujah. too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're welcoming you to the show, Denise. Well, thank you very much. Thank you we, very much, Brenda. We are excited. We're thank excited you. that you're here. So we we're going to talk to you today. Okay. We're really going to talk to you today. And we're going to play some of that music, too, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay. you got to hear some of her music. Yes, ma'am. But my first thing is, what inspired you to even think about doing the CD? I know you can sing because I heard it. <laughs> but a lot of times, singers sing in the choir. You know, they may go visit other churches and sing, but they never go that next step. What caused you to do that? What, what inspiration? Well, you know, um, for years, people have been telling me, you know, when I go somewhere and minister, they will say, you know, you need to have a CD, and I've always wanted to. Um, but Finally, um, the last couple of years, the Lord brought everything together that needed to be together, and it was the right time and the right season, and everything worked. And so when we um, was able to, um, what I like to do is, because a lot of people do other types of music, but I like to preach the gospel in song, and so I had to use those songs that God has given me, and so they're reality to me, they're real. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Now, was that difficult to, to bring that to fruition, having that music in the background, getting your words on. I mean, is that a, a difficult project? I've always wanted to ask. It could be. Um, and it's so funny because a lot of people say, well, how did you actually get your CD done? Um, it was a matter of me deciding that I was going to do it because God works with faith. And so the day that I said, I'm going to do this, made up my mind to do it. And so I just started by taking one step. And I had no clue as to what to do or how to do it. And so I asked this person who told me about that person who told me about that person, which goes back to um, the saying that if you make one step, you know, uh, he'll make two. But that's not the biblical concept. But it really is. I mean, you have to give God something to work with. Yes. Because he can't work with nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. But he does work with faith. And so he'll get in the project with you if you just make a step. Yes. He'll get in the project with you. I like that. He'll get in whatever you with you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So go ahead with the next question okay. or with one of your own. Oh, well, uh, the first question is, what, what's your inspiration for creating creating CD? That's the one I just asked. Oh, well, I want to know a little bit more about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell um, me about the spirit and how it impressed upon you and what songs. Well, um, a lot of these songs that I had written ages ago, um, just a long, long, long time ago, I never had the opportunity to really get them on print the way that I wanted them. I had done little um, projects, but it wasn't until I moved out here in Las Vegas and the Lord placed me in the arena of people who are doing music all the time. Ah. And so I was able to take it and step it to the next level because these people, I, you know, I tapped into them who already were doing those kinds of things. So and you so got into the workshop and that brought it out, huh? It was not necessarily a workshop technically, but it was my workshop. Yeah, yeah. 
That's right. That's right. Do you write your own songs? I wrote everything on the CD except for one um, one of the songs called You Are God. Um, mm -hmm. That was written by one of the local artists here. Oh, okay. Okay, so my question is, you do have a beautiful voice, and listeners, when you hear it, you're going to want the CD. So when did you start singing? I can't remember not. <laughs> oh, wow, that's beautiful. Um, I remember my mother was a choir director, and my dad sang with the, the quartet in our home in Cincinnati. And um, they would have, you know, all the family gather together. And I remember, I think as early as two years old, me singing with the uh, um, a special event that they had, and so it's just always been a part of me. Mm. Wow. Isn't it funny how God gives us gifts and from birth, actually, uh -huh. and then eventually we find it, and yeah. then it's it's with you for the rest of your life. And if you follow Him and listen to Him, He'll put you where you need to be in that. Some mm -hmm. people find out and then they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And they're always asking, "What is my purpose?" and Whatever you do and you do well and you love to do, and somebody said, what would you do for free that, you know, that you just do naturally, that you would do for free? Figure out how some way, you know, to get paid doing that. And so a lot of the times that people teach in the natural world, then God's given them that gift of teaching. And so, you know, you just take that and run with it, whatever it is. Or if you love to, um, some people just love to play instruments or they just love to, or they love music. And so, you know, whatever it is. Yes, yes. And that's so usually. So I, I have a question. You said you're uh, you singing since two years old and your folks had you up singing. Did they give you encouragement or any special words or did they... In put into you any special vision about singing? <laughs> Not really, just that you're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> discipline. Yeah, it's pretty much so. What a well, wonderful coming, discipline. And, and coming from a singing family, of course, you yeah. know, you're going to get up and you're going to do this because it's natural for them. So they just assume it's natural for her. I'm sure there wasn't much rebellion there against it, right? Not oh, at two. <laughs> not really. And, and it's funny because it was my older siblings that were doing more in the area of music and it was sort of like the Jacksons thing um, that I was the Michael sitting over in the corner you know and nobody ever really knew that he had a gift or a talent but I always would get by myself in my room and I'd be singing and wailing and all this kind of stuff and and then but I was too shy to do it in public so you nobody actually knew that you don't think your parents heard you singing up there by yourself my mother would always say Denise Close your big loud mouth. <laughs> 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 Wasn't necessarily encouraging because I was so loud and so. But my, but I, I, I really identified with my calling, is to cry loud and spare not. You know, and that's the gift that God has given me. I do have a loud voice. I do have a, a boisterous voice, and it's to be used for the kingdom. And Praise you God. know, I can't be shy and timid. See, with that. there's hope for us loud mouths out there. Absolutely, Hallelujah. it's an assignment. <laughs> Yay, it's an assignment. I like it. Well, you know what? Since we're talking about that, I'm just going to jump ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and play track nine so they could see what we're talking about. The big mouth. <laughs> and then uh, we'll come back. In the 27th Psalm, around the 13th verse, it says, I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land. Your own mouth. Now, wherever the heart is, trouble or trouble. 
I want to hear when I'm down and depressed. Yes. I, tell you, I mean, it gives you chills. <laughs> Get up and dance around the studio after that. Wow. The Lord will bring you out. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. yes. And it's beautiful how she says, when I woke up, because God gives you grace and mercy every single day. Yes. New grace, new mercy. That's right. So when she woke up, she had no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Now, you wrote that. Yes, I uh have. -huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is just that so awesome. That was preaching in the Word, too. Absolutely, I tell you, absolutely. Yes, and yeah. that's what she said that she likes well, to do. That's my assignment, to preach the gospel in song. Yeah, that's absolutely. my That's my, uh, my pulpit. Yes. Wow. Yes. Do you do, uh, do, you do um, speaking at uh, other churches? Do you accept invitations to, I to preach and I preach anywhere and anywhere I can. Okay, pastors out there listening. <laughs> I, uh, I drive a bus for a living. I preach on the bus. <laughs> really? All right. Fantastic. So when you woke up that morning, did that song come to you? Where, it, how did that it really was just downloaded. Uh, pretty much um, I had heard a sermon um, by one of my favorite preachers, um, Jackie McCullough, and I don't know how, I don't even know what she was saying, but I, this song just kind of just started flo flooding my spirit. Um, when I woke up this morning, I had no doubt the Lord would bring me out. And mm. um, he said that he would lead me through the valley of the shadow of death, and he said he would not leave me for his rod and his staff are my help. And then it goes back to the scripture. I had fainted. I would have fainted. That's what David said. Um, unless I believe to see God's goodness in this land. And so um, I really would have. I, I, you know, a lot of times we're discouraged in this fight and in this walk. Um, and I really would have given up a long time ago. I would have thrown in the towel. I would have just thrown up both of my hands if I didn't just have that hope and that belief inside of me that drives me even when I, I don't want to. You know, I just said, God, just take it away if you're not going to help me, if you're not going to bless. You know, but every day it's that inner thing that I, I would have given up if I didn't believe that God was going to do uh, exceedingly abundantly above more than I can dare ask hope or even imagine well wow. now you're out there and you're listening and you're getting encouraged and don't forget the phone number call in and let us know if you're getting encouraged or if you have a question how you can be encouraged six five zero five five eight eight or one eight hundred three six six eight 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 three the lines are open call in let's call get you some me. encouragement <laughs> it's, it's call me. yes yes exactly absolutely so now when that filled you did you get up and just start writing it or if you were in the kitchen washing dishes, did you stop what you was doing and start writing it? Usually I have to stop whatever I'm doing. I, I'm not, I don't remember it particularly that day. Um, I think I was in my room, in my bedroom, and I just I have to get something to start writing because I know that I'll forget and I'll, I'll forget how it goes or I'll get a tape recorder or something, you know, because I, I'll lose it real quick. Yes, yeah. yes, because I find that in, in my line of work as well. You know, if I don't write it down, and sometimes I don't, Sometimes I say, oh, I'll remember it. Yeah, right. Well, do you have it organized, or do you have notes all over the place like I do? No, actually, I don't. I have a tape recorder. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, that writing takes time. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you can lose it that quickly. Yes, sure. exactly. Sure, but when you gain it, it's gained. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay, so is this your first CD? This is my first professionally done. I've had some sort of like demo projects that I've done. But this time I was able to um, unite with some professionals that live here in the city. Um, one such person was um, Damian Hall, who I worked out of his studio, who work, is Gladys Knight's uh, drummer. He also is a producer, and you know, and so I was able to um, connect with him, and he introduced me to a lot of people. His dad, David Blakely, who worked on this project, and Alex Gordon, who did 90% of my keyboard arrangements, and. Um, Joe Piggy, who wrote You Are God and um, played organ. It's just so, so all of these professionals I was able to tap into. And so that's what took my, my CD to the next level. Wow. Well, we're just going to have to stop and do our commercial. I yeah. looked at the time and I'm going, okay, this show is sponsored by American Family Insurance. And so we're going to hear about American Family Let's Insurance. Do. Let's hear about American it. American Family Insurance believes your dreams are what matter most. That's why we offer affordable ways to protect them. My dream is to own a second car and a house with a two-car garage to keep it in. My dream is to start my own business and make my son my first employee. Whatever your dream, we can help protect it. Learn more at AmFam.com or contact your local agent. Your dream is out there. Go get it. We'll protect it. Hi, this is Brenda Ward from Open Book Radio Club, and I recommend Julia C. Bennett at American Family Insurance. 
You can reach her at area code 702-395-1179. That's 702-395-1179. Or go to her website at juliacbennett.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-C-B-E-N-N-E-T-T.com. She will be delighted to help you with all of your insurance needs. That's American Family Insurance. We're back and we're talking to Denise Robinson about her fantastic CD. If you are tuning in um, right now, you just missed When I Woke Up This Morning. Oh, yeah. And it had you a beat it. to it. I mean, you just got that energy going and, and you knew that God is taking care of all your needs. Oh, that's right. That's yes, right. exactly. That first cup of coffee is going to taste so good because God's <laughs> going to share it with me, right? <laughs> so tell us, or tell the audience, where can they get the CD? You can get it from my website, deniserobinson.org, uh, D-E-N-I-S-E-R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N.org. Or if you live in Las Vegas, you can give me a call, 702-522-0177. Fantastic. One more time with the number. 702-522-0177. I said it wrong the first time. <laughs> okay, so repeat it again so they can write it down. I don't call myself that often. <laughs> 522, um, area code 702-522-0817. Okay. So if you're here, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, you can call her and get the CD, and that would bypass all of that, uh, you know, clicking here and shipping there and all of that good stuff. Yeah. But, uh, and if, if you're calling out of the state, you still can call. And you can talk to Denise, and she'll encourage you too, right, Denise? Absolutely. Got a word. Got yeah. a word. Ministry, ministry, ministry. Right. Get the CD, and let me give you a word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move on to a different um, project right now because I understand that not only is she a singer and a music writer, but she's also an author, and I see a book here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you, Denise, to talk just a little bit about that. Yes, let me hold it up so everybody <laughs> can see it. Yeah. I am I am extremely, extremely I'm pleased about my book. I never, ever even imagined to be an, ar an author, and the Lord has opened up uh, that gift, and I just sat down actually starting writing a sermon, and it ended up in, uh, in the book of, uh, the form of a book, and so I just really appreciate God for opening up that, um, just just the Word of God, just making the Bible simple, uh, simple applications, and and just saying, okay, a lot of people, are, you know, want to be a Christian, and they don't have a clue as to what that entails, and so, okay, what is this, you know, gospel about? And so I just wanted to write a book about this gospel of the kingdom. Because yeah. the Lord said, you know, until this gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the land, he was not going to return. So we need to know something about the kingdom. You know, and I was starting to read this book a little bit before we came on here, and I was very impressed with its clarity and with the solidness of the word that was coming out. Yeah, I just try to make it the Bible made simple, um, just yeah. simple principles. Um, um, what what does God mean when he's, you know, saying these things? And so how do you explain? I'm a simple person, so I have to be able to explain it in in forms and ways that I can understand and people like me. I was reading the part about where a lady had come to you in a prayer group and asking about, she's having money problems, and you just showed her the name of the Lord as Jehovah Jireh. You just said, call upon the name of Jehovah but Jireh. No, right? the, the funny thing about that is that she was really looking for peace. And so I was telling her, I said, the names of the Lord, you know, he's, he's he has a name for whatever need you have. And so she was saying, I, I need peace, and she thought that she was calling on the God of peace, so she just kept saying Jehovah Jireh, and she said, all of a sudden, I started getting money from here, money from there, <laughs> but she said, God, I need peace, you know, uh, Jehovah Jireh, it's, it, it was so funny, because she said, people came to her door that she didn't know anything about, people owed her money, started paying her money, she said, all this stuff, and she just kept calling Jehovah Jireh, and then she looked at the prayer manu manual and said, Oh, I'm calling on the wrong name. <laughs> she said, <laughs> instead of Jehovah uh, Shalom, I'm calling on Jehovah Rapha, and I'm wondering why all this money is coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I said it, it, it proves that it works. Jehovah exactly. Jireh, all provider. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you, because it's really small, I want you to just read on air, Ain't Nothing But a Thing. <laughs> ah. Just that part. Ah, here on earth, here on earth, People worship money or the things that money can buy. They would do almost anything to gain earthly possessions, 
but it is not so in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, money is so insignificant that its inhabitants walk on streets of gold. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. So she's taking all of this information straight from the Bible, and she's making it commonplace so that people can understand. Well, yeah. The Bible was written in common language so people can understand. Yeah, yeah most people think that, you know, you have to worship money or the things that money can buy. Um, but, you know, and some people say, well, um, the kingdom of God is all about money and all about money. But he said the inhabitants walk on gold. You know, yeah. it's supposed to be, you know, it's just so insignificant that it, you're supposed to have it. Mm -hmm. The and real treasures in heaven or, or it's God's glory and God's pleasure, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So now, if someone wanted to get this book, because it is simple, where would they go and get this? You can either um, contact me at deniserobinson.org, or you can uh, go to Lulu. I, uh, I self-published this one, um, and it's lulu, L-U-L-U dot com. Fantastic. So they can go there and order the book. And I advise that if you're a new Christian and you want some answers, this would be the perfect place to yes, go because absolutely. it is very simple. It's just making the Bible simple. Um, okay, what is Jesus thinking? What I mean, why were we created? Why? I mean, um, a lot of people don't know why God created us and we're created to be in his image and the likeness. But what does that mean? And what does that entail? Do I have power? Do I have authority? And yes, we do. We have th power and authority in this earth. And um, we can tap into it because if we know, then we can grow. He says, my people err for lack of knowledge. So if you don't know, then you can't grow. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you, you love music and you're singing and now you have a CD, but you still teach. And so you decided to put that teaching into a book. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And God just opened up. And again, I didn't, didn't have a clue as to what to do and how to do it. And, but it wasn't until I stepped out, because I'd had the manuscript in my computer for like two or three years and, and hadn't done anything with it. And the day that I said, okay, i got to do something with this, and took one step, made one phone call, and then everything else, you know, God gets into what you get into. So yeah. I if like you're just sitting by the wayside saying, I wish I had something, you know, I wish I could do something, you would always be sitting right there. Yeah, and I like that term. I like that term. The Bible speaks of praying. He can only move when you pray, when you come to him and tell him what you need. Then he moves. I mean, we could sit all day and say, sure, I'd like to do this. I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes he gives you a direction, and a lot of us don't do that. So I know that he had to give you a direction in both cases. Absolutely. And you heard his word, and yeah. you, you decided. And you act upon what you hear. I mean, it's not difficult hearing the voice of the Lord. It's what you're prompted to do that most people just sit and by the wayside and just let it pass. But if you act on what he gives you, he'll give you more. Yes. yes. But if you're not going to listen, it's just like a parent. I'm not going to keep talking to the same person who's not going to pay attention to me. So if you had one word to give someone in one minute, because that's what I see up there, <laughs> what would you say? Um, be encouraged. God um, is faithful to do what you can't do. And so just hold on and trust in him, and he will bring everything that you need to pass if you just trust him yes exactly so if you know that he has given you a gift and he has given everyone one you're saying that if you step trust out him, step out um and don't be shy don't be timid but if you make a step god will bring the, everything in heaven and earth will come together and in alignment to make sure that you get the assignment done because it's all about the assignment of the kingdom. Amen. Well, thank you, Denise, so much for coming in. We enjoyed you. Listeners, we ask that you tune in again next week to Open Book Radio Club. And don't forget to go to the website. Have a very good weekend. Thank you for tuning in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. to Open Book Radio Club, where like-minded people tell their stories. Poets, authors, small businesses, spoken word, and music writers come together as a community. So don't forget, tune in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. to Open Book Radio Club. Please join me, Paula Darnell, every Saturday, 7.02 p.m. for We Care Outreach. And know that the Bible says in Matthew 25, 31 through 46, that what you...